Welcome back to part three of this free player controller course. In part two, we added in an enum state machine, sprinting, and nested blend trees to idling, running, and sprint animation blending. In this part, we'll be adding in jumping, falling, and animation logic for each state. Let's continue our journey and jump back into Unity. Whew, that was a good one. We're back in our project and per usual, the first thing we'll do is add in a new player action. So open up our player controls, add in an action named jump, and we'll set the key binding to spacebar. Head into our player locomotion input script, we'll auto implement that missing function from our interface, then let's make a boolean property named jump pressed. We gotta add in a couple new lines here that we actually haven't seen before. The first one is if our context.performed is not true, then we actually just return so we don't do anything. This basically means we don't do any of the code below the return line if spacebar isn't held down. So for example, if we released spacebar, we would immediately return. If spacebar is down, then we simply set jump pressed equal to true. We don't want jump pressed to just stay true after we press it though, because what happens if we press jump, start jumping, and jump pressed is still true? Well, we'd start just basically jumping every frame into infinity. So I'm gonna basically just set jump press to false at the end of every frame in the late update method. That way it's only true for the duration of a single frame if we press it. Let's also clean up this class using regions. So I'm just gonna add in a few different regions, kind of like we saw before in our player controller class. Let's go back into our player controller class actually, and let's add in gravity and jump speed. And the very next thing that we're gonna do is make sure that we're keeping track of our movement state before performing any of our movement based logic. So in update movement state, let's program in the logic for deciding which airborne state that we're in. I want a quick reference to if we're grounded or not. For now, this will be just a simple function, but I want to make a separate function called is grounded because this check is actually going to become more complex later on. Our character controller has this built in property called is grounded, so we're just going to use that for now. But like I said, in the future, we're going to find that this check is just not sufficient for perfect ground detection. So now if we're not grounded and our character controller's velocity is greater than or equal to zero, then that must mean that we're in the jumping state. So we'll call set player movement state to jumping. If we're not grounded, but our velocity is less than zero, that means we're in the falling state. So we just do the same thing except for falling. Note that if we're not grounded, this is gonna just be overriding our lateral state, which is what we want in this case. We need to handle our vertical movement. So let's create a new method and make sure it's called in our update function. The order does matter here. So just make sure that our you know, update movement state is called before our vertical and horizontal movement calls. And we do want to call the horizontal movement last because it's actually doing the move call. So now I want to get a quick reference to if we're grounded or not, but we're in a bit of a dilemma. Should we call our is grounded function again, or should we use something else? Well, I'm going to argue that we should solely rely on the player's enum state to figure this part out. Since the is grounded function was originally used to control our state, to me, it makes more sense that way, it's less confusing and more architecturally correct. But how do we do that? Because we don't have an explicit is grounded state. Let's instead head into our player state class and create a helper method. We'll create a public function called in grounded state, which returns true if we're in the idling, walking, running, or sprinting state. Now we make that call and we have our is grounded reference. Before we program in our jump logic, let's create a new private float called vertical velocity, which is just gonna help us store our current player's vertical velocity. In handle vertical movement, we say if we're grounded and the vertical velocity is less than zero, then let's set our vertical velocity to zero. That just means that we don't wanna be moving down if we're already grounded. After that, we subtract our gravity from our vertical velocity. Then if we press jump and we're currently grounded, we add our jump speed to the vertical velocity using this equation. Now don't ask me why we use this equation. This is actually something that comes straight from Unity documentation. Uh, all you need to really know is that this is the recommended way and it works. Now this is a little bit annoying organizationally, but we need to add in our vertical velocity to our new velocity and we need to do our move all in one go like we talked about before. So in our handle lateral movement function, let's ask if we're in the grounded state, then down at the bottom, we'll just add our vertical velocity to our new velocity.y component and that's it. 
For now, I know we're not using this is grounded check at all, but we're gonna come back to this in the future and we will be using that. So make sure you add that. Let's see how things are working in play mode. So down in our player state script, we can see that our current state is working correctly when we jump, cycling between jumping and falling. And our player in game is actually jumping up and down correctly. So our vertical velocity is being applied. One more thing I wanna show that it is really important here is if we're just to run off the side of an object, or in this case, our map, you'll see that our player directly moves into the falling state. This is great because we're about to build in animations for jumping and falling, and we wouldn't wanna do the jump animation when we just fall off of an object. Okay, so we're about to start in on some jumping and falling animations, but real quick, before we do that, I wanna point out a small issue that we should resolve. If you look at our player in play mode, you'll see that we have a bit of an offset from the ground, even though the collider seems to be perfectly aligned with our feet. So what is up with that? It's something called the skin width here, which behaves as you might expect, it's an extra buffer of space around our actual collider. Now, we really don't have much of a skin width on this character, so if we make this really small, you'll now see our player is grounding in the correct position. Okay, with that, let's head into the animator and we're gonna go up a tab from our blend tree into our locomotion animation substate machine. This is where we're gonna be adding our jumping and falling animations. Before we add those though, we need to define a new transition into our locomotion blend tree. Otherwise, when we transition out of it, we'll never transition back in. So let's add a transition from any state into our locomotion blend tree. And now we need to add a condition to do this. Before we do that though, let's add in some new parameters. We'll make some new booleans named is grounded, is jumping, and is falling. So for our transition back into locomotion blend tree, we'll just say if is grounded is true, then transition into it. Open up these settings for the transition and make sure you uncheck the transition to self. We have some more animations that are already made for us named jumps. So let's drag that into our animation folder. We have a few animations in here, as you can see. So what I'm gonna actually be using is the jump up animation then make a separate animation for the falling part of our loop. There's another animation here for us named falling loop. So let's drag that on in. We can now define a transition from any state into each of our falling loop and jump up animations. For a falling transition, add the condition is falling is true. And for jump up, make it is jumping is true. For our jump up transition, uncheck transition to self. And we also want to set interruption source to next state, which means, for example, our falling animation could interrupt our jumping animation if we were to hit a ceiling or something. Let's do the exact same thing for our falling animation, because since it is a falling loop, we want it to be interruptible. Let's open up our animation script. First, add in our new animation parameters as animation hashes. Then inside the update animation state, let's add in a bunch of different local booleans for our current state. Again, this is redundant, but it's gonna make our code much more readable. It also makes it really easy on us right now because we can just straight up say animator.setBool is grounded hash to is grounded. And just do that for each of our animators boolean parameters to keep them properly updated. I also think it maybe makes more sense to put these calls down with the other animator parameter calls. So let's just do that real quick. And at this point, everything should be working. So let's go into our demo. I will note that this third person controller is, is still gonna feel really jittery and a bit awkward. I said this before, but we are gonna fix this later on. Don't worry. With that said, we can see our jumping and falling animations are now working seamlessly together. And not only that, but we blend nicely into our locomotion animations as well. So that's the end of part three. If you aren't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more game dev videos. And I, I really hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace.